Hi, John. Hey again. On Friday, the 5th of August 2016. Now I'm going to see my barrister in a minute or two. And uh, I'm running a little bit late, but we've made an agreement that we can carry on tomorrow. Uh, because it's quite extensive and I don't need to rush. So um, I want to go through the last part of the um, instructions that I'm giving to him and he will have to convey that to the court, not the judge, to the court for the court to make a ruling decision to settle out of court and to force a hearing for Tuesday against Natalie Flowdew Brown, CIB detective. I'm calling the accused and the accuser in a counterclaim against her and the other 43 people as accessories to the fraud land title and the other two that I'm pulling into the court at the same time, the cover-up of the fraud landowners, James Pierce Brown and Simon Brent Roundtree. Those two are instrumental with their conveyancing lawyers and Mark Honnebrook and Andrew McDonald conveyancing lawyers who have uh, defrauded these land titles all the way through back to 2008 and Dr. Ricard Bell and Jamie Peters who went bankrupt when he asked me to have a look at his land case and gave me the titles. That's how it started off with Jamie Peters in 2008 gave me his titles to investigate the problem of his bankruptcy with Westpac Bank. Now, Bailey's Real Estate, I warned them, do not sell the property because I gave them a caveat and a notice directly in their hand, John and David Bailey, at the auction. I went to the auction and told them to stop it. They went ahead and sold the property. And that's where the problem started from, with a bad title, because that's what it is. It is a bad title on land conveyancing and transfers under the section 145 and 145A of the 1952 Land Transfer Act. The law states that all interests, unregistered interests, and any other interest in land must be put on the record of that title. They failed to do that. They failed to investigate the title of other interests of Maryland titles, and that being a Crown grant title to Britain. All of these complicated matters that they've overlooked. They've ignored it in LINS, land information. They rejected my caveat from Mohi Manikau, because that's a Manikau land title from Glasgow, and he has a right to put his name on the certificate of title as an unregistered interest, as much as I am uh, authorised to put the Moai's hapu names on their title, the Wānau name. They rejected what I furnished as my caveat to lodge into under that sections 145A and 145. They broke the law right there. Okay, from there, it's come this far from a bad title. It was sold from uh, a foreclosure on the bank, the Westpac Bank. I told them, stop, don't sell it. They're, they're going to get liable. All these people I'm saying, I'm in real estate to know what a land transfer and a mortgage document is and whose names are on it and who has the rightful title. 
Now that's corrupted all the way through. There's a bad title on the road. The little road going through that property had a title on it and they couldn't sell the property. Doug Ricard Bell wanted to buy it because he's a property developer and Jamie Peters was a property developer. He got out of his debts with his um, owing the Westpac Bank 100 million and that's what I was taking up, all of that claim and I ended up investigating him in the end. And so it's led to all of that fraud inside the banks and these um, um, acts that Pope Francis destroyed, those acts that he put together for mortgages. And this is where the problem lies, in those bank loans and mortgages on that title, land. They used the land and those instruments over the land. They were stacked up like that, but we still own the land itself. I'm concerned with land and Chief King Itaurua at Waitangi. So, from there on, the title was sold illegally sold to the new owner, Doug Rickard Bell. And he forged the title of the little road and brought it back and put all the investors into that title road and sold it. And that's where a dead man was used, a surveyor, to survey that land on that road, public road, the Crown Road, Right, and the Maryland, uh, Mary, uh, um, the Maori Confederation, Federation, supposed to investigate that. Mary Council, the Mary Council, New Zealand Mary Council, uh, supposed to. They wouldn't listen to me. They wouldn't listen to me. They have authority over the roads, the, the public roads, and they wouldn't listen. Right, so that's the problem. Was the little road going through, where the names of the investors were discharged through the road to in order to sell the property to Doug Rickard Bell. He sold it to get out of it for what he paid for it. He didn't make a profit on it. Yet there were Chinese people at the auction that would have paid over 80 million for that property that sold for the same price as um, uh, to the new owners, 38 million. Right? No one made any money out of it because it was a bad title. And the Chinese are said to them, don't touch it. The same with Lotton Point lands, 400 Lotton Point Road, don't touch it. Because you're going to end up in court and lose all your money. Any investors watching me on these videos, do not touch any land that's got this flag flying on it. Or the Moai crown seal on it and the seal of King William IV. Do not touch any of those lands while we have interest in it. Right through the world. Right through the world. And America is under this flag of jurisdiction of the courts. So that's what happened with that title. It was sold as a bad title to the new owners, Simon Brent Roundtree and James Pierce Brown. They were not disclosed of other interests in the land. They cop it now because they put up a fight against me and told me to get out of their office. I went to deliver notice to them, three affidavits, and James Brown says to me, this has got beyond a joke. But he wouldn't ring the police up to come and tell me to get out of his office. Worst thing he did was this, failed to get his conveyancing lawyer or his lawyer, barrister, onto me. The same as Doug Ricard Bell failed to put their conveyancing lawyers onto me to say back off, John. No one did that because when they looked at it, it's too tough to front up against a native title owner. That's what it amounts to. They fail to use the proper sources to 
answer to my barrister. Charles Hirschfeld was my barrister when I was going to Westminster. He's acting for the Tribes Confederation and Sunakura and Chief Kingi Todor. I am his native advocate with Sunakura who went to Harvard and she's the Maori Prime Minister of the Maori government. That's her. That's her department. I'm the Moai. Different kettle fish altogether. The king straight to England. And so Charles Israel is the barrister to go to the United Nations. He's already ready to go now. This is where I'm supposed to be going with them to cover these land issues of anything technical and complicated. That's my job, to inform and advise Kingi on his legal rights. This is all legal. I'm legal in the system of legal. If you're not legal, you can't go anywhere in this. It's private. It's nobody's business. It's only those who are privy to that private contract business. This is a contract, private contract, defaulted with those two owners that I've just said on Cook Street. They're in deep trouble because they're ignorant of the law. They're ignorant of the Crimes Act 1961, which is what I've quoted here. I'm just sending all these documents that I've just gone over to rehash my mind and brain around it to update my barrister. He's just texted me to say that if, if he runs out of time, leave it late for the afternoon because if there's no time, we'll carry on tomorrow on the weekend with this case because it's not a short case. It's not, it, it's longer than any other case in the world because it's kings and queens and monarchs and sovereigns we're talking about here. Nothing less of a king. Okay, did you get that? It's nothing less of a king that's got the authority to talk like this. If you can't talk like this, you can't enter into any of these discussions. Only a bright barrister or lawyer who's right up to commercial contract law, construction contract law, law of the sea, and mortgages, lands, levy, debtor instruments, and also a fair measure of native titles of origins and native blood. Okay? So, this title is now under investigation of the court. They don't have to go far because he's, just, he's going to say to the barrister, the barrister asks some questions, he's going to say, well, it's all on YouTube. That's why it's on YouTube, because it's quicker to get it across to you, the people, witnessing everything I say. There's nothing but the truth, so help me, God. It's the truth that I'm saying in front of the whole world, watching. Now, the barrister has to do some negotiating with these documents that I'm putting all online for you to see and learn how to be a crook and how to use deception and fraud and corruption to make a lot of money. Okay? I'm not saying this about my barrister. I'm just saying that's the system. I'm identifying who Mr. John Wano is in capitals. Okay? So I'm going to rattle through this because the time now is 1.22, 1.12, and I want to be out of here by 3 o'clock so that I can get in town by 4 o'clock on the train, uh, so I can't waste too much time, because I wanted to get in today, I could have left it for tomorrow, but I really want to get on with it, and meet um, Shannon, been a long time, um, waiting patiently for seven months for disclosure notice to come to me, and so I've put all the X in these documents, so that he can pick what I'm saying to quicken things up. Otherwise he has to think for me and 
go and look for something that might work. Well, these all work. It's no guessing game in this lot. Do you know? I know what I'm doing with the law is in my blood. The Rogan judges brushed it off on me. Right? The Rogans brushed it off on the Manukau's and the Wawa's at the East Coast in the Maori Land Court there. Okay, that's where I'm getting it from, and a good measure of Cosgrove Irish lawyers. Okay, that's in the blood too. That's why it's coming out this way for those people down the East Coast. That's what I'm saying. I'm on the land blocks in Port Awanui for the right to talk like this to that land that's there for everyone's sake, how it should have been under this flag jurisdiction. We wouldn't be in all the trouble there. Right? Because it's been running loose with John Key and Helen Clark and been sucking off the goodness out of it for their own private investment interests. The police have got 14 companies as private interests where the money's going and they're dishing it out amongst themselves. I want to find where John Wanoa's money's going to because that person, John Wanoa, countersigned my bail bond to get me out of prison. Blackmail me to sign. So I signed. I signed in good faith my brother who signed the other half of that money instrument that's attached to a lot of money. I want that disclosed, Shannon, in front of the whole world watching because they're learning how to do it, okay? They're learning what happens in courts under a Queen Crown Corporation system. This is a King's Crown Corporate system. Still the same corporate. Still the same. That's where it came from. The corporate came out of this flag. It didn't come from anywhere else in the world but Westminster and King William the Fourth in his time period, 1832, 1837. That's the only time there was mortgage liens enacted in Westminster Parliament. Acts 1832, 1837 is our authority to use that on anybody right now. We opened up the Waitangi Marae King's Bench Court, Kingi. Remember, that wasn't too far ago. It was only on the 15th of April 2016 this year. You got a good memory? Yes, you have. So... In there, we passed all these acts that we went through on the 3rd, the 4th, the 5th, and the 6th of February, Waitangi Day, on Titi Marae. We took them across into that marae to enforce them. That's why we went there for Krakia and blessed them. Then we're supposed to put the flag up. And then Hohepa Ipia says, not today. You see, he had no right. Kingi, you told me, what about the flag? I said, no. He said, don't go near it because the police will keep you away from it. That's Somebody brought the police in there, Paul Tipini, constable, was there. Just as well he was there. But it was offensive for him to come there. I felt that it was intruding on our spiritual path of opening that marae. With the police being there, it just gave that witness of corporate legacy to that day. I'm glad that he was there for the police because he's Maori. He had every right to be there as a Maori, but as a corporate, that's business. That marae is business. It was put there for the Crown's business. All we're doing is seizing the Queen's Crown because she's not there. She's gone to the EU Parliament as conflict of interest. The King and King Itaurua is confiscating the Queen's title from that marae and put it into the King's bench court title under those hapu chiefs of Napoli. It's their contract. Don't say it's nobody else's. They're the ones that went to England to get it from the king. 
Okay, I want to make that point quite clear. That King Itaurua is a king in his own right, King Edward, and has a financial interest claim under this flag of jurisdiction, the Admiralty Court Martial Law inside that Marae, to claim the Queen's Victoria Trust, Gold Trust Fund. Okay? Remember that. Remember what I'm saying. Because that's Ngāpui's business, nobody else's. They are the ones that put that together. Tainui has their own flag. They got their own contract, if they got one. I don't think they got a contract, because it doesn't suggest it on their flag. But this is the contract, with the black strip around that red cross in the corner, of the four kings. Okay, King George III, the father of King George IV, King William IV, and King Ernest Augustus I, the three brothers, and their father at the top in the corner there and the four corners of the earth and that blue admiralty sea admiralty of the sea king of the sea law title that's what a jurisdiction and legacy i go on that's my authority to king itaura the chief and his chiefs inclusive inside Ngākui. nothing against every other hapu and their iwis and Chiefs, but this is a contract. We're talking about contract business. I'm talking business. That's what it was set for. And anybody else that says any different, they have no business talking about it or flying it. Okay? If you're flying the flag, you're flying it for business. That's what it is. The protectorate from the British military is obligated to recover all the debt. Shannon, I'm just saying these things on this video as proof of claim. Proof of claim to what I say is the truth. If Natalie Flowdew Brown doesn't turn up in the court, Open District Court, on Tuesday, the 8th, my birthday, 8th of August, 1949, if she doesn't turn up in that court, then it rules in my favour. For everything I've written about, all online, all those affidavits, documents of title, doctrines of discovery title, Maui statute, King William IV statue, King William IV flag, Maui flag, Maui jurisdiction, Maui spirit of God's earth, planet, title, and everything I'm writing about belongs to Maui and the people of Maui who wants to join us. Put your name down on my MauiPowerhouse.com. Go there and register your interest in everything we are recovering with these documents. Right. Everything I write is going online. It's already on Facebook now. These things are just written this morning. It's gone online and I'll put these wrists and scan them, put them online. You can read them. Okay? Good novel. It's a real one. True novel. Okay. So from page 11, carrying on from page 10 to last time, we have Corrupt Use of Information, uh, Section 105A of the Crimes Act 1961. Part 6, Section 105A. I'm quoting all these acts because it quickens up the barrister. There's too many of them. You just need to pick one and it's sunk the whole thing. I'm putting them all there so you can pick any one that he thinks because it will go on forever. We are only taking all affidavits that you put on one page. If there's 50 affidavits, equals one. I'm saying everything on here equals one affidavit. That's what I'm saying on this video as an affidavit, a verbal affidavit, in person, uh, that all the sum of the affidavits, all the sum of the affidavits, and statements I make of all these pages equals one affidavit. All right? One affidavit. You have to deny one of the whole lot because they're all coming out of the New Zealand Crimes Act 1961. See, you couldn't use any other system of law but New Zealand law. I'm using New Zealand law effectively to capture the fraudsters, okay, committing the crimes and they're getting caught. And he even got what punishment they get, seven years for some of these acts, seven years to ten years for doing some of these acts. I'm just going to rattle them off quickly because we're sitting at 142. 1.43 p.m. now. I've got to finish this by 3 and gone. Okay? 
So the video will go on for an hour or so. But it goes like this. Corruption, Use of Information, Crimes Act 1961, Part 6, Section 105A, Advantage of Pecuniary Gain. I just put these headings there, but the typed ones have gone to the barrister, and I'm flicking the rest of them off after. I've, he's already got them, but I'm updating them on what I've put in red outline. I'll put them on later on tonight. I'll put all the typed ones, that there's an X out of the X, itself and I've marked all the red bits as being relevant to this case that that one policewoman committed lots of crime and it lists all the crime of that mystery man John Wanoa and I signed and that John Wanoa countersigned and he's carrying the loot that I want all of it back to my birthday 8th of August 1949, right from the time it was institutionalized as at birth. Okay, it's quite a bit of money. It's quite a bit. So look at your name. You could be next. Okay, we'll show you how to do it for a little fee. No, the pound note is a giveaway. It's free for £25 for a share. A stake in all of this. So we're actually throwing it back to you. Okay? All right. Now, procuring again. 107 section, convict, con, convention of statute of land laws. Contra contravention of statute of land laws in contract construction law. Imperial Enactment Applications Act 1988 applies. In that act, Misleading Justice Oaths Declarations Act 1957. See, I'm quoting these that are relevant to this case. I took a lot of time, long time to work out all the land cases and banks and investments that these John Key is playing around with. He's playing around with these. Okay? I'm just showing you what he's got away with, what we're going to take off him. His name is already in... High Court of Admiralty in London with Judge David Lindsay Mackey. And my lawyer, my my two C lawyer, Yu Tai Choi, became his lawyer. See he's slick, he's a South Korean lawyer. He wanted all the business I've got with the title energy to go through him. I said, No, you wouldn't know what to do. I'd have to tell you what to do, he's quicker if I do it. See? He wasn't very happy about that. He wanted the business to do it because he's South Korean because I'm using those shipping and steel shipping to get all the materials here and the yards over here. No, I do it all myself. Everything I do myself. Quicker. Saves all the little bits in the middle. Um, right. And I think lawyers are doing pretty well sucking up all this. Um, 107 Controversion. Um, misleading Justice Oath Declarations Act. Perjury. Section 109, perjury, right? 110, false oaths. She made false oaths on her declaration and her statements and her affidavits. See, she swore, swore everything was true when it wasn't because she altered the names and put them in capitals. Those people who made written statements as witnesses for Cook Street, there was a few of them, she took them and put them in the capital letters the names and altered their statements it's not the same statement it's been altered by a policewoman's hands and she did the same with me put my name in capital so she can arrest me and the mystery man she arrested me not the mystery man she's supposed to arrest what was written on the paper in capitals and so i'm claiming that inheritance to that name she wrote she wrote it not the lawyers she took papers and it says there, the X here, you'll, you'll, you'll see them. She's purported to use documents for pecuniary gain by altering the words to suit her fictitious law papers. Right? The Bar Association will be annoyed that the police are a state of law themselves. They make it up. 
they made it all up. And it put the profession of lawyers and barristers and the Bar Association in disrepute because the courts are run by police and John Key for their businesses. See? That's not key. Businesses. Okay. I'll, I'll write along. False statements, section 111 of the 1961 Crimes Act. 112, evidence of perjury, false oath, false statements. She made false statements. 113, fabricated evidence. 114, use of purported affidavit or declaration. She declared them as being true. 115, section conspiring to bring false accusations against me, or false accusation. 116, Conspiring Crimes Act 1951, Conspiring to Defeat Justice. Okay? She's, com she's broken, she's defeated justice in court. Section one, and they used her documents, the court used her forged documents to convict me and lock me up in prison. Okay, see, it's bad. It's bad what they did to me, a chief and I'm my own right, and sounding like a king every day. Okay, it's bad. That's really, really bad for them to underestimate my capabilities. Okay, 116, conspiring to defeat justice. 117, corrupting witnesses. These are actual acts and jurisdictions that the courts go under. See? See these titles. Corrupting witnesses. They corrupted the witnesses. That's what they did by offering the document. They didn't write that in legalese. You can't tell me witnesses in public write in square letters. Hmm? Think about it. And be surprised. Right. Uh, part 8. Crimes against the person. Performing unlawful acts, part 10, crimes against the right to property, this property, land and its documents, you see? So, it's a crime against me and my property rights to the land, okay? And it's documents that I put together as a title on the lands. Unlawful taking my shirt, and la and, uh, which is my authority of the chiefs. My shirt had this badge over here, okay, and King William's photo here, and his coat of arms over here, and here, right? It had all his regalia all over, and she ripped it off me, and took it as evidence against me. How stupid is that, when I'm a partner of the British military, navy, and parliament? How arrogant and ignorant is that? against me, one of the natives here, of an original surname, to say, who are you? Where did you just come from? Where are you just going to? Prison. Okay? That's not very nice to do that to me and think that I'm just one of the others who just hopped off the boat from another country, like refugee. Okay? Right. Two or nine, theft of uh, stealing shirt, theft of stealing. That's 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 an act two one nine section two one nine of the Crimes Act nineteen sixty one using Crimes Act nineteen sixty one. It's the shirt in the land. That theft of stealing. Two two zero section theft of person in special relationship. I'm in special relationship with my land under that section. I'm in a special relationship with my land and my hapu here in Auckland and the historic native title where it came from. Okay? All those Maoris battled to battle each other, let alone battle the British and all the immigrants coming from Australia. That was right there that I picked up on that and they settled themselves with their policemen. Okay? Police Tempered under two, section 20, 220, the police tampered with my land claims, private 
business, they got, they're not lawyers. See, she's not a lawyer to make legal decisions. She made legal decisions with her document with a police logo on it. The police logo is a police logo. It's no authority from the Crown or the Queen or Westminster or from the Bar Association, Law Society. None of that went on when she walked in here with the document. That's why my barrister thinks crazy, crazy woman to arrest me with those documents and let alone walk in here with them. The offence is walking in here with documents as if she's a lawyer, policewoman, and detective at that doing the arresting when it's supposed to be the constable standing beside her. He dobbed her in, by the way. He put her name in capitals. See? She came in here with no hat on. She came in here as a common law person in the front office when she's running a business in the back of the Auckland Central Police Station Fraud Department as CIB, Criminal Investigation Bureau, investigating fraud. And now I'm investigating her fraud. You see what I mean? I'm doing a better job than her as being the subject. They took her out and put her in Solomon Island and took her right out of here so I wouldn't be able to go near her and pull her into court. It's too far for her to come to court. That's why she's not here. She was subpoenaed in January by the judge, Collins, to appear before him and me and my barrister. Seven months later, still no Natalie. You see what happens with police take matters legal into their own hands? They get into more trouble liabling the other police. They've libeled a whole lot of them, 15,000 of them, Natalie, just in this act special relationship I have with my NAT 220. You can attach the special attachment or special relationship with all the other acts that you've broken. Okay, I'm explaining how many acts you broke. I'm reading them all out. Okay, we go from 220 to 226. Conversion of conveyance. That's what it says. Conversion of conveyance. That means the transfer of land titles. Now we're getting into the land title bit of these acts of criminal activity that she's got mixed up in land. If you get mixed up in land and you're not a lawyer, you're in real trouble if you don't know what you're talking about. I do. I know what I'm talking about with land and law. So, third party. She's a third party um, default contract. She's dragged into the contract by making me go into her contract with John Wanoa that has to be disclosed who John Wanoa is in this fraud case. You see, all the subjects that are listed in the case has to be identified. Who did what? Who injured who? John Wanoa injured me. I want John Wanoa, the other one, that is probably my brother, that I haven't met yet, that's been holding all this money all these years, 68 years money, that I haven't had any of it yet. Somebody else has got it. I want to find out who got it. Okay? Wins and all the rest of the people sucking off Mr. John Wanoa. Okay? Famous. Last words. Where's my bit? Okay, okay, okay. I'll stop laughing. 226. Serious now. Conversion of conveyance. Third party. Default contract. Accessories to the forward. Everybody is attached and joined it to the fraud of Doug Rickard Bell and Jamie Peters in the first place. It rolls on together. They're gliding on top of the land. The land is there with me, and they're gliding on top of the land. 227. Being in possession of an instrument for conversion. Natalie's statements of witnesses, third party, to the 
default contract is a conveyance lawyer absent with um, landowners against my land title claim. So I've just added that on, but 227 says being in possession of instrument. That's the act that she's broken. She's in charge of her instruments that she's walked in here and arrested me with them. From then on, those instruments were passed over into the jail and from the jail into the court, into the court, to the barrister, to the barrister, through to the bank. The bank, back into whoever's picking the money up to pay my barrister, Shannon Withers, with money from John Wamnoa. Okay? Can you see me talking to myself in the mirror? But that's what it looks like. I got a claim to that mirror, man in the mirror. I got a claim to it. And I want Shannon to pick it up for me. Get a writ, a writ of execution to enforce a warrant to arrest the property and all the assets attached to those levy debtors people are named. 43 of them, including the whole 15,000 police now liable. Refer to Pope Francis in his multi propria in here. Those acts that he's put out that you are liable singly persons, including legal persons, which is a company with capital letters or brackets around the word, is a corporate company, is now liable with this land and me, the sheriff. Anybody else who wants to be a sheriff one day? Okay, talking serious here, business. Corporate contract. Being in possession. Right, that's that one. We've got, we, we'll, we'll fire through these pages. 12. Dishonesty. 228. Dishonesty. Taking and using the document. Bond money. Yeah, I'm talking about bond money. That's what it says. Dishonesty. Taking. Using. Document. Bond money. John Wanoa, John Wanoa, the mystery man, bond, countersign, signatory, to the money, property, belongs to me, okay? I want to see who John Wanoa is as picking up the money, the trustee or the person called John Wanoa. Okay, I'm filing a claim against that inheritance money and every bit of property that's attached to it and follow the chain and the money trail where it's gone to and take the whole lot. Take the whole source of it with this leg and the king. King's authority to seize the whole lot. Okay, that's what I'm saying, Shannon. You have to come with me to London, straight into Westminster, and sort out this problem. Because that's where the authority comes from, that the government here has been rife and running free. It's like a dog running free. 228. A. 228. A. Commission dishonesty. Right, they have received commissions, payment, as dishonesty, forged documents, extracted money from John Wanoa, Hawani Wanoa. A countersigned a bail bond. Who is the man with who is the man with um, the name? that I claim the lot from my birth certificate, 8th of August, 1949. 
right? Who is the man with men or something? I, I, I can't read my own writing. But anyway, the man that I'm claiming, the lock from my birth certificate, 8th of August, 1949. That's the day of my court hearing, 8th of August, right on my birthday. I'm having a court hearing. Okay? Funny enough, it turns up that way. 228C, dishonesty, conspiracy to defraud. There, right, she's right in that one. Me and my land claims by police third parties with convincing lawyers and judges. That's, that's, I've added that on to that act, 228C, dishonesty, conspiracy to defraud. Act. That's another one she's committed. 229, breach of trust, trustee, as registrar and John Wanawa, mystery man. So the trustee is a breach of trust. Trusts were set up, that's why the Pope destroyed all the trust because of the fraud going on with this trust. That John Wanawa trust. And the trustee, John Wanawa, I want to meet him and shake his head. And then pull the money off him. Okay? Um, two, three, four, robbery. Yeah, robbery, it just says robbery. Now, the New Zealand police are accessories to the Cook Street land conveyancing lawyers and me, my chiefs and the public of New Zealand, they conspired to defraud. The police covered up the fraud inside the land mortgages. Very serious accusations I'm making here. They can't contest it. I'm waiting for someone to squeak and say something. They won't because they don't want to go to court. Okay? Um, they, they defrauded the public of New Zealand as well. With this land transaction, private contract, land claim, British title, original native title. Okay? That's that one. 237 is blackmail. I uh, was blackmailed by Detective Natalie Flowerdale Brown, CI Bay. Blackmail, that's not blackmail. 238. Natalie started the process of documents for pecuniary gain to steal money from me and a name forged as John Wan Noah, Mr. Wan Noah, Ho Wan Ni Wan Noah, big bold capital letter. And this other one, one Noah John. Okay, I'm being graphic here because that's the way it looks. Better like this. So those are being written by her hand. She designed those documents she used to come and cut me off to prison. 239. Demanding with intent to steal, ETC. Right. That's in that too, demanding that I follow her to prison. And I'm under duress because there's police all, all over the place here. Twelve of them all together, twelve police came here just to arrest me. Do you think I'm a bad man? I might say swear words, but do you think I'm a bad man for that many police being paid how much an hour? To come here, put me in their little van, paddy wagon, and cart me off to prison. Just to make sure I didn't run away with my heart condition and my bills. They confiscated those too. You see? I got a bone to pick with her because she picked up my medication on my table and took it as evidence against me with my shirt with the badge on. I'll go get the other shirt so you can see what the shirt looks like. I better show you the exhibits. The, the exhibits. I must show you people in the world watching the exhibits. See, I, 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 I made another one. I made another shirt to replace the other one she's stolen because I couldn't do my job without my shirt when I go to Waitangi and in public. And I'm the, I should be wearing it all the time. 
and she stole it with this coat of arms here on this side of King William coat of arms and his photo here a King William photo right there right this is how offensive she is and the Hanover coat of arms on the other shoulder right these, these are all authorities that give me the right to speak for a king and uh, Moai seal of Moai standing in London Queen, Victoria, Queen Elizabeth Great Court in London you've got the Moai seal right there with its authority right over the world as God's earth title Moai right there right these are all the authorities then you've got King William's seal here with him on his horse he's on his horse that's the one on the hat right there in the middle with his ship of admiralty in the background behind it and his crown his coronation crown on the top of the eight point star on this flag right i'm just telling you how she offended me why it has injured my profile and my intellect brain the white girl right and then we have the flags here the four flags here you can see there right we've got the king william's admiralty flag there on the sea king of the sea flag that's that one with the crown and anchor there and the one below it is the British flag below that that's the British flag of Westminster right then we got the confederation flag that's flying here at the back here flying on Waitangi treaty grounds on the cross run of the admiralty ship the British admiralty ship of King William is here that one and the Moai flag here the Moai flag with the pyramids in Africa on here and the Moai statue and his dark red cross of the Marae color right and his Admiralty the sea there and also the Sun Ra is in there too so I'm saying she ripped it off me and left me bare standing here that's that's really against the human rights to come in and strip me because she's a policewoman and because she's a woman a woman can do that to a man and to belittle me that's the injuries that she is answerable to in front of the judge i'm just showing you this channel of what it feels like with me being one of the chiefs here in this country of an original surname being belittled and put down by a police white woman okay not here against woman but this one took it a bit too far why well, it's made every other woman in the police force look at this you look at what she did to me with all this in the background behind me and what I write on line all that lot you add that all up and she just wiped it off and those other CIB Aaron Pascoe and Tim Duffy especially shoved it off as though it was nothing they're, they're lucky to be here because I can deport them with this flag and those acts of King Williams and even hang them I can say that because that's what it says in those acts of Westminster we're allowed to use on anybody right that's what I'm saying whatever I say with Kingy goes okay he's a military man and we stick by the law of Admiralty on his Marae okay so when we get down to 240 obtaining by deception causing loss oh hang on we got to Hang on, to robbery, but oh, hang on, to, I've got to go back a step. 
a missed amount of time. 2.43, woo! Oh, I should have been gone. I might have to scoot off in a minute. 213. 213. Right, I still got some time. So I'll try and scoot through. I can do this all again, but I, I, I wanted to try and finish it off. Um, I'll start up the top. That's 12. 12. Second year document, foreign money. I've been through there. At least start this process of documents for pecuniary gain to steal money from me and a name forged as John Wanoa, Mr. Wanoa, we've been through that. 240, obtaining deception by causing loss by deception. My business was stopped. Loss of time from 2008 to 2016 through 2012. Concurrent joint of crimes, accessories to the fraud. 2008, Doug Rickard Bell case. Without checking the title's interest, um, Bailey's real estate was notified of our affidavits, Manukau land title, caveats, land interest, Lynn's rejected as section 152 of the Land Transfer Act 145 and 145A requires that the names, our names had to be put onto the title as unregistered interest, but failed to do that. Lynn's rejected our caveat to reg register lodge um, lodge that claim. Okay. <clears throat> Fourteen two four one punishment of obtaining by deception and causing loss by deception. Two forty two false statements by Natalie CIB on her documents. She arrested me with altered the witness statements and gave them new names and capitals like she was acting in two jurisdictions of law the bar association was absent in her documents fraud statements affidavits the same way she changed my name from John Wanoa only Wanoa lowercase into the John uppercase Wanoa <coughs> and Mr uppercase Wanoa and one or uppercase John natural lowercase there's a trustee of a bank account or money that I want you barrister Shannon with us to lodge my claim in against that name or names that look like mine I countersigned to get that money um, to release me on bail that has gone to this man John Wanoa, and only I can claim that man's name and financial investment interest to its inheritance, property, money, assets <coughs> I want back from the um, from the something of 8th of August 1940 time, from the date of 8th of August 1940 time, the date of settlement with the court on 8th of August 2016, I want settled. I want that account settled and given back to me what it has accumulated. Right back, the whole lot. Okay, that's under that F, false statement by Natalie Cloudy Brown, CRB, Criminal Investigating Group. That man's signature's name, as I state, is my brother or sibling of the same name I identify as my property to salvage back immediately when I win the case of no contest to its claim than myself. Somebody's got to claim it other than me claiming it in this case, this court case. I want fully disclosed, I want it fully disclosed, this is what I asked for, I asked the barrister for this, that name, on as Judge Collins ordered for me and for you to recover Shannon with us, Barrister, for Vulcan Chambers, from Vul Vulcan Chambers, I instruct you, order you to present my claim to the court and registrar. This claim form dated on the 5th of August 2016 today on behalf of my Chief's King Total and my King William IV Crown Sovereign Authority, Sheriff Creditor Authority, 
Bench uh, Authority jurisdiction of the Waitangi Marae King's Bench Court, dated today on the 5th of August 2016, of our meeting today. That's a statement. I, John Hawani Kaki Wano, swear to tell the truth, nothing but the truth, so help me God, I keep my word true. My statements, my affidavits, my word is my truth. Okay, so that's, I've just made a oath to God Almighty. So everything I say is true. And everything I make in statements <coughs> is my truth. 243, Money Laundering, Section 243A, 214245. Concealing Property Ownership, Interest in Land, Property, Sale, Purchase. So that's that land title mixed up with her now. Right? That's why I'm pulling the three of you together into that court hearing. The two landowners and you, Natalie Fowler and Brown, because you're in with them, covering them up. That's why I'm seizing the property. Fifteen. Proceeds of property is property derived, realized indirectly, directly, offence of the property real or personal property of any description in New Zealand and elsewhere in the world, please note this offence is against the land convincing lawyers Mark Hornerbrook and Andrew McDonnell, Doug Ricard Bell and Jamie Peters, property developers, and James Pierce Brown, Simon Brent Roundtree, present owners, as levy debtors accused receivers of that bad title land, property, sale and purchase agreement sold by Bailey's Real Estate Directors John Bailey and David Bailey, owners of the real estate company, are now liable under Section 244 and 245 Crimes Act um, 1961, imprisoned them, all for these offences. Shannon, I want them all convicted and charged. I put a levy debtor warrant on them already. 243A, change charges for money laundering. Section 244, defense of enforcement of enactments. Use these acts, Shannon, as jurisdiction of criminal court. 245, receiving. Receiving from my bail bond, blackmail, John Wanoa, name. Arrested me, John Hoani Kaki Wanoa, natural name, and not the mystery man. They're supposed to arrest on her documents. It had the capitals. She took me away, the natural man, with the lower case on her documents. <clears throat> I want you to get an audit on that account, Shannon. Instructions from me today, publish this online, Facebook and YouTube here and Google and Twitter and my website, mypowerhouse.com for my world audience as witness to these serious fraud cases. Okay, so these, these are um, punishable evidences. Right, that's what it says here. 16 punishable punishments for Natalie Flower Dew Brown and Mr. Wan Noah, John Wan Noah, Wan Noah, John, the person receiving the money, bribes, from that bank source of money. I want all back in my position, disclosed to me and my internet family of Moai Crown King William IV membership, financial investment, bank, down note, currency, uh, shares, interest, business, these, that's what I'm saying, the people online buying shares now from this business I'm running, Moai Powerhouse Group Limited, London, that's what I sent you, Shannon, online, that certificate of a company registered waiting for me to get 
a residential site to open it up for business. It should have been this property. And these police held that business up. All that loss is up against all of those people. And the government. And the Queen. And the government. <coughs> the families create um, no currency share interest business. These criminals have tampered with that information. Shannon, please tell the judge I want settlement on Tuesday the 8th of August 2016, which happens to be my birthday and the date of the man called John Wanoa. I want to share his inheritance, money and title, land, property and assets inheritance because it's on my birthday and he may have the same birth date as me. That's why I want to shake his hand and have a party with the spoils of the money at Port Awanui on the beach with the fire going, okay? That's what I'm saying here, that we're talking about somebody who's purporting to be me, that these mischievous people are hiding from you, people watching this unfold. <clears throat> that is my financial investment bank interests in that man called John Wanoa, Where's it gone? To someone else, the money. I want to find who is picking the money up instead of me. Not have, and they don't have a financial investment interest in my name, my Moai Crown, King William IV, British UK government partnership and its business with this flag. Okay, so you've tampered with the British government and navy and me and Kingy Toto chief private contract business still there 182 years of it years of it section 257 using forged documents that's another act Natalie Flower Dew Brown used forged documents against me section 258 Natalie altered concealed Reproduced documents without the bar association, bar, bar, company, association, um, law society's permission to act in the capacity of a lawyer, conveyancing instruments and arrest person documents. Had no right to come in here with those documents and arrest them. Chairman, you know that. She had no jurisdiction to receive, deceive me and have and law of New Zealand, use the law of New Zealand to defraud me of that money, the natural man, John Hawani Wanoa, and give me a hard time and string me off into prison as if I'm a criminal, when she is the criminal. Okay? Section 259, using altered or reproduced documents with intent to deceive. That's the title of that act. Natalie did this to arrest me for money extraction from me. That's what I'm saying about that. 17. We're getting there. We're getting there. What's time? Yeah. 17. Paper or instruments of forgery. That's another act. She used her documents as legal instruments to arrest me and extract money out of someone called John Wanoa, in capital, Wanoa, Wanoa John, and Mr. Wanoa, and also had the cheek to use Hawani Wanoa, Hawani means John, but that's in capitals all the way through, you'll see it on the license, it's on my license, it's on my documents of my go-kart, it's on everything in the capitals. So that person I'm going to meet at the court, Shannon, you're going to have to tell the judge to make him turn up. Because if he's not there, if he's not there, all my documents, all over the world, is enforceable with the fact. 
and my sheriff's bags to seize everything back with you in your Queen's Bench Court. In the meantime, I'm in the King's Bench Court of the Auckland District Court and the King's Bench Court on the Marae, which is courts of high intelligence. Those Maoris in there are very intelligent people. You know why? Because it's taken 182 years to make this work and this play work. That's how intelligent they are. All of a sudden they're going to learn very fast how this works. Okay? You people might know first before they do. So you better hurry up and up with You better get fast lessons from somebody who knows how this works. They happen to be Desmond, one or Desmond, one or in the little words, not the big ones, the little ones. He's got a big check up for the big ones yet. But Desmond knows all this stuff. He's very good. Those people down the East Cape. Watch out for Desmond, because he's coming to a home near you, with his head off. Okay? Just say hello. Okay? Right. Landowners on the block. Section 10. Section 310. Conspiring to commit offence. That's the title. The landowners of Cook Street, at their end, their conveyance lawyers, real estate companies, court, police, public witnesses on Cook Street, 77 Cook Street, conspired to defraud me, arrest me, and extract money from me, um, deceive me, my rightful land ownership title they can't contest. They denied me my rightful land ownership title, they can't contest, all right? They have no documents to stack up against it. Section 312, accessories to the fact, title, act, CIB Natalie Faudu Brown, liable 15,000 police, after I warned her, she chose to ignore me, as did Tim Duffy, CIB, and Aaron Pesco, CIB, liable to. So they just made fun of me. They made fun of me. There's a cost to that. The consequence is they're going to lose everything. All right, because one of these guys will come around and see them. I warned them. They just laughed it off. They, they, Tim Duffy just laughed it off and marched me out of the building. You're going to learn fast. Don't play with this. Admiralty law of a king. I warned her she chose to ignore and me as did Tim Duffy, CIB, and Aaron Pasco, CIB, liable too. She liable the New Zealand Police Minister, Judith Collins, and Justice Minister Amy Adams, who in turn liable John Key, her boss, their boss, Prime Minister of New Zealand, and Jerry Matapurai Andrews, Governor General. They liabled all the way up the chain and liabled the Queen, Queen Elizabeth, as their boss. So she's liable. They were all liable with the 970 million trillion trillion pound note sharing that debt with Pope Francis, the creator of this UCC law, tenant law, career law, civil law, admiralty law. He borrowed from here from King William III and King William IV, he borrowed for his business because there's no other way he could get make business out of flags and ships he hadn't got. Okay, so he's usurped it, we're going to usurp it back or take it off him. Okay, so now we're on the last page. Arrest without warrant. He arrested me without a warrant. Natalie entered my property without a warrant with forged documents to arrest me was used by the prison courts and lawyers to convict me innocent. I was found innocent by Judge Grant Fraser um, and found not guilty of any charges. He dismissed it because of what I was saying here. I'm saying to you on this video. 
why he found me innocent because I scribbled it all over his, the charge sheets that came through um, in disgust of reading it I wrote about it then handed it over in the court to him directly and he took it away and came back and made his deliberations after reading it that's what he came out with he found me and John Munger innocent it was then he changed his stance when the police woman got up that wasn't Natalie and started rattling off to the judge about an offence I had committed. She bought another contract in and the judge picked that contract up with these forged documents that Natalie Flower Dew Brown put together and those um, uh, Crown solicitors was using the same documents, same forged documents. That's what I'm making a point here in front of you people watching as witnesses to a case that's classic to all the cases in the world and America they're doing the same thing to you only difference is no one has the authority of a king to override the Queen and Obama they have free reign she's immune from anyone because she's using King George III's titles and King William IV's titles for her jurisdictions with herself and her EU Parliament not Westminster she's trying to shut it down with David Cameron gone now, you see it's falling apart. The cookies crumbling and the house of cards is falling with these documents. The more I'm telling you, the more the house of cards falls around their heads on that land block on Cook Street. It was that that kicked the land titles into touch with this flag. Arrest without warrant, we've gone through that, 249, section, special provision in case of treason. This is John Key's one, 349, section, special provision in case of treason. Now, because John Key has committed treason against the financial investment interests of the public of New Zealand and the Hapu chiefs, at Waitangi and Kingi Taurua and myself the Sheriff and my Mawai statue memorial in London and around the world in all the powerful countries Washington DC, New York, Brussels, um, um, France, um, Singapore and Chile, um, New Zealand, South Island, um, in Dunedin and here in Auckland those Maui statues are my native title to Tahiti and Raiatea Island and Rapa Nui, East Island, back to Mokonui, East Cape, Te Pito, on our land blocks. Okay, so this is what I'm saying. Special provisions in case of treason. The special provisions here are that John has committed treason against Chief Kingi Taurua and me, his legal advocate, inside Kingi Taurua's Waitangi Marae King's Bench Court. He's offended me and Kingi with this flag of jurisdiction over him. Okay? He is a criminal. I'm accusing John Key, I'm accusing you of committing treason on our land why we're pulling this case in and getting a full and final settlement against the 970 million trillion trillion pound note with a trillion pounds on each of the police heads and all of your politicians all the way back right back to 1830 right all that figure adds up and the fiat money and everything you're running your businesses in your crown corporations the Pope destroyed. He covered his own tracks up with his Catholic Church and order, uh, church and, and state, and covered his own back and left the Queen and you vulnerable to attacks as singled out persons. Okay, I'm singling you out, Shannon. I'm singled out Natalie Flower Du Brown first. And those two landowners, Simon Brent Browntree and James Pierce Brown, to court next Tuesday, 8th of August 2016, on the record, for the record.
of the Open District Court and the High Court of Admiralty in London, where these documents go to. Okay, just in case anybody tries any tricks. That's online, by the way. The High Court of Admiralty is London. is online. You can anyone can put your claim in and take them to court there. They gotta go there. We don't have to. They gotta go. There. If they don't go, court case shut. Okay, costs. So that John Key is up for treason. I'm accusing him of treason, Shannon. And he'll be next. After I finish with the land owners, John Key is on the stand next. He's in the court. Right? We're pulling you in one by one. And then Jerry Matipurai Andrews, the Governor General, he's next after him. Right? They've liable each other from an ancestor. When I sacked you with Sue Nicola, I put the documents in front of you that sacked you. John Key had no governor after that, no governor general, and opened up the parliament without a governor general. That's all it amounts to while you were still here. Can't get away with that. I'm attaching all these enjoined up to you all as accessories to these fraud man cases. Okay? The Pope had his legislative acts there that he's put in. Uh, judicial acts that I've included in my writing notes for Shannon, for you to file into the court. So costs, section 402. I want a full account of the court costs, who got paid from what is the man John Wanoa and me, the counter, he countersigned my signature on that account. It may not be a bank account, but on that account where that money is stacked up. I want the lot back. I sign that claim to all that money recovered with an enforcement warrant and a writ of ex execution issued by the court for me to recover all that stolen money, property and business losses, other assets to defray the costs to recover Whatever method I so choose, choose to administer over those recovered properties, how I get it will be my business with recovery debtors, um, companies. Includes the recovery of lands, any land that is on my Maui native hapu King William IV flag sovereign authority, admiralty court martial law title, ownership, instruments. Every instrument I have with its seals on it is now enforceable from that warrant you get me from that court to enforce on recovering the debts owed to the membership of Maui, Hapu, and the chiefs in concert with each other, okay, as entities. Um, pound note is a levy debtor instrument for bill charge uh, enforcement as well by the courts in that inclusive charge warrant back into property ownership up to chief's custody lands and natural resources under the natural law anywhere in the world. This flag's going to 250 countries in the world. Shannon? <coughs> Contract. 18, last one. Section 4 Act of to bind the Crown. All what I've said here is under the Section 408 Act to bind the Crown. It binds the Crown to what I'm saying in these Acts. To recover the debts owed. This act binds the Crown to this full and final settlement of Natalie Flowerdew Brown and the landowners of Cook Street and their accessories to their fraud legacy of crimes committed through the whole Queen Elizabeth II Government Crown Corporations involved with Pope Francis who destroyed 
trusts and corporations as another means of our legal claim is that no one can use those acts against me in any court in the world because that's what the Procria, Motu Procria says, in the world the Pope destroyed all his laws from the Vatican City for UCC law you can't use against me in this flag and the seal of the king. UCC law, admiralty law, mortgage law, bank law, civil law, courier law, and um, any other law that the Pope put together for his commercial contracts. This is a contract flag, so all the contracts that have been put on me are now in this court case as part of my claim to that inheritance to what I say belongs to me. Okay? I'm talking just about me in this video. For now. This case. Precedent case. Okay, so the Crown Corporations. Um, Pope Francis destroyed the trust too. He cannot destroy Moai Crown, King William the Fourth, Acts of Westminster, Parliament, 1832-1837. We enforce those inside the Moai King William the Fourth trusts Waitangi Marae King's Bench Court on the 15th of April 2016. King Itaudua and me, John Kaki Wanoa, sorry, King William the Fourth Sheriff. Passed those laws and the power note, levy debtor instrument, and our land laws to recover all the lands in the world. So, people, it is now 2.45 and I'm just about ready to go into town to see my barista, and I'll put these online later. I was going to put this video across to him, but I, I, I'll do it later because it looks like I'll be going to see him tomorrow as well. So now I will pack up and take off into the city and I've got an hour to get there. As long as I'm there by four because he'll finish at five uh, and I'll have just enough time to talk to him and uh, come back to see him tomorrow. But to all the people watching, um, this has been a long and winding road to bring justice to the world and it is taken from 2008 four years plus six equals ten years to get this far the Lisbon Treaty was the change into the EU Parliament that I watched the Queen sign with Gordon Brown Prime Minister then I followed that case all the way through and saw what the Queen was doing when she bought her first wind generator. She was the first to buy one of the big wind generators um, um, and start her own private business right then. When she went to the EU Parliament she was going there to run her own private business and that's where she is now for her own financial investment interests. She has no interest in anybody anywhere in the world, including here, no interest in her Maori people. She had no interest in them in the first place. Only the Governor General to sell the lands. That's all, Kingy. There was nothing in it for any Maori. There is plenty in it for Maui and the King <coughs> of England, Britain, Ernest Augustus the First. Right. So, um, um, the Lisbon Treaty was the same time that this forged piece of land was going through its paces in the city. Mohi Manika always said to me, John, I want my land back. I want my land back. He's died and the land is still there and he hasn't got it back yet. You see? Because his family wouldn't know what to do with all of this to get their land back. It's all still there. The land is still there. It's all the mischievous ones running it that we're concerned about with these documents. 
no one's coming to the court. So we have to force them into court. You see, Shannon? We have to force them into court to talk for themselves. Whose title are they going under? You won't find anybody around that can measure up to these titles. You see? So, um, although this is a long video, I just want you to know that it's the same all over the world. It's the same all over the world. There's nothing anybody can do about monarch titles to change anything except this flag. You had to be higher than what's there to get around that problem. Okay? It's just as well King William IV gave it to us, the natives, because he trusted us, even though we're squabbling amongst ourselves in our own domestic fights. The British came here to clean us up in our fights, and then they scored all the land at the same time for their immigrants. That's what Obama and his boyfriend says. Michael says, we're all immigrants. You see, so you ask yourself, say, we're all immigrants in New Zealand. And say, which immigrant got here first? You see, so I put the birth certificate there of Manukau. If it ever Manukau, you know, 1830, 1834, the two, the three Manukau titles. Those are the titles. I was here, and the British gave me one of these certificates to birth me and use me as instruments to make money out of them. Well, they didn't tell them that. They didn't say it that way. I'm saying it today as if it was back then, in 1830, that... When they got off the boat, they should have said to the Manukau's, Oh, we've come here to steal your land. We've bought some certificates for your land because it says on the certificate, belongs to us. The Manukau says, No, hang on. Who the hell are you? Where did you come from? And why are you starving? You, you, you mean to say you come here and you're going to start eating our food and occupying our land with that piece of paper? It's still the same piece of paper today that they're using that instrument because the monarch said so, right? So now we're saying, hang on, your driver of your monarch, he's gone somewhere else, he's gone AWOL. She found another little cubbyhole up there in Brussels with her German friend, Merkel. So we've got two women that are duping you all. They're duping you all, the woman screwed you all and put a coronation on her head to make her look like it's real. It's not real. Her crown is not real. That's why she's able to do what she likes because she's taking all of that from the real crown of the king on this hat. There's more in this hat going for it than the queen. If it's worn properly, so that's what I'm saying to all you people. You've been duped by the Crown Corporations, Rothschilds, with a pound note. They took the pound note and made this funny money, US dollar, in Dreamland, and spun it over 2,000 times to make more money out of thin air. Now they're going to have to ask me a few questions about who this John one or with this funny money running around somewhere and making lots of it. I want to have a look what's behind the curtain. What's behind the curtain so you can see too. I'm going to have a look myself and I can tell you from a distance what's behind the door. See? That's my little secret. That I um, want to tell King Toto what's behind that door. Waitangi. They were using Waitangi Marae Treaty Grounds as their business office all these years. They have been duping the Maori they set up, the tribe Maori, Iwi, and duped all the native people into what I call sheep pens and then split them up so that they can't get together again and be a big mob 
so the dog has to go through the middle and split them up again. The dogs being those politicians that run around like uh, Smith, uh, conservation minister, Nick Smith, run around like a little hapless dog and uh, um, trying to sell houses and, 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 and can't do his homework. See, he got stung by a bee and uh, poisoned, drank some, some water that poisoned him. Uh, just shows you the mentality of these immigrants. Some immigrants are mischievous and we're catching them out for you. Okay, so that's all. I think I better go because it's just on my three and I better get out of here. So enjoy this video, but we'll put it online later. And when I come back, um, then we'll have some more of this. Finish it off and put it online for you. So in the meantime, it's from me and from him behind the mirror, Mr. John Wanoa, like that, in capitals, saying good afternoon and have a happy evening. Bye for now.